Chapter 17 What's a nine-letter French word for eggplant? My father shouted to no one in particular. I was sitting at the other end of the dining room table, doodling in my math workbook. As part of my punishment, my parents took away my privacy privileges. I wasn't allowed to do my homework in my bedroom. The worst part was having to listen to my father's crossword puzzle questions. I don't get it. What's the point of doing crossword puzzles if you have to ask everyone else for the answers? Emily walked out of her bedroom with Catherine on her shoulder. Her long tongue was darting in and out of her mouth. Catherine's tongue, that is, not Emily's. Has anyone seen Catherine's bag of dinner pellets? Emily asked. I put them in the cookie jar, honey, Mom called from the kitchen. Mom, I yelled, I ate those for my snack this afternoon. I thought they were one of your new healthy treats. Emily laughed. Catherine jiggled up and down on her shoulder. It's not funny, I said. Now I'll probably grow a long, disgusting iguana tongue. As I was rinsing my mouth out at the kitchen sink, the doorbell rang. I'll get it, I yelled. <clears throat> Remember to look through the peephole first, Mom reminded me. If I stand on my toes, I can just barely get my eye up to the peephole. I looked out but didn't see anyone. Who is it? I shouted through the door. It's us, Frankie whispered. Open up, Zip. I pressed my face against the crack in the door. I'm grounded, I whispered back. You know I can't play. We're not here to see you, Frankie said. We're here to talk to your dad. I opened the door. Frankie and Ashley marched right by me with Robert bringing up the rear. Good evening, Mr. Z, Frankie said, going right up to my father. We've come to discuss a very important business matter, added Ashley. My father looked up from his crossword puzzle. You kids aren't supposed to be here, he said. Hank is still grounded for another week. This matter can't wait, said Ashley. Aubergine, said Robert, looking at the newspaper in my father's hand. What's that supposed to mean, snapped Frankie. It means eggplant in French, said Robert, pointing to the blank spaces on my father's crossword puzzle. Thirteen across is aubergine. Sometimes you scare me, Frankie said to Robert. Come on, boys, let's not forget why we're here, Ashley said. She turned to my father with her no-nonsense face on. Mr. Zipser, as you know, Magic 3 has a contract with Papa Pete to put on a fantastical magic show this weekend at McKelty's Rock and Bowl. We've tried all week to build the special hat we need for the grand finale, but our hat looks like a couch. We're begging you, Mr. Z, said Frankie. We're pleading with you. Free Hank. We can't build the hat without him. My father shook his head no. I'll help you with 43 down, Robert offered. Oh, I also happen to know three across. I'm afraid Hank has to learn his lesson, my father interrupted. There'll be other magic shows. He stood up, went to the front door, and held it open. You couldn't get a much more final no than that. Frankie, Ashley, and Robert left. My father closed the door and started back to his chair. The doorbell rang again. My father spun around and yanked the door open. Now listen, kids, he began. Then he stopped suddenly. The next thing I heard was him saying, I'm sorry, can I help you? I got up to see who was at the front door. What was Mr. Rock doing here? Oh no, I bet I broke the drum, and he's here to tell my parents. I hit myself on the forehead with my fist. Not hard, but like I do sometimes when I'm frustrated with myself. How could I have been so stupid? I hope I'm not interrupting your dinner, Mr. Rock said. I'm Donald Rock, the music teacher from PS 87. I was wondering if I could talk with you for a moment. My father opened the door wider and let Mr. Rock into the living room. I was surprised to see him. I had never had a teacher pop in before. But then again, Mr. Rock wasn't like other teachers. What's he doing here? Emily whispered to me. You must have messed up big time. My mother came out of the kitchen, drying her hands on a green checkered dish towel. She picked up a plate from the dining room table and offered Mr. Rock a cheese with a cracker with some of her new soy cheddar cheese spread. He popped it into his mouth before I had the chance to warn him. His lips stuck together when he tried to talk. I had the pleasure of spending last week with your son during his detention, Mr. Rock began. He scraped some of the soy cheese spread off the roof of his mouth, trying to smile at the same time. My mother offered him another cracker, but smart guy that he is, Mr. Rock said no thanks. I've had a lot of time to talk with Hank and to observe him. 
I've noticed that he is somewhat frustrated about his schoolwork, he said. Very frustrated, my mother added. Mr. and Mrs. Zipser, I believe Hank might benefit from being tested to see if he has any learning differences. Mr. Rock waited for their answer. There's nothing wrong with Hank, my father said. If he spent as much time doing his schoolwork as he does daydreaming and puttering around his room and building things, he'd be an A student. Hank is just lazy. Maybe that's not the case, Mr. Rock said. You know, many children have learning challenges. Every child's brain is wired differently. Every brain is wired differently? What was he saying? That my brain was messed up? Oh, that's great. Now everyone will really think I'm stupid. What does that mean, wired differently? My mom asked. Different kids learn in different ways, Mr. Rock said. I know that because I myself had difficulty in school. Hank's sister Emily is an excellent student, my father said. She doesn't seem to have any school problems. Emily held an iguana pellet in the palm of her hand. Catherine whipped out her long tongue and snapped it up. I'll tell you one thing. Emily might not have school problems, but she has weird taste in pets. I'm sure you're very proud of Emily, Mr. Rock continued, but having a sister who excels adds to the pressure on Hank. What pressure, said my father? Hank doesn't worry about anything. That's his problem. My mother was studying me very carefully. My leg was bouncing up and down again. She was watching it. Stan, can we at least talk about this, she asked. I think that's a good idea, Mr. Rock said. You have a lot to think about. I just thought it was better to have this conversation in person rather than on the phone. Give me a call if you want to talk further. Mr. Rock turned to me. Hank, we've been talking about you, but not to you. Do you have any questions? Just one, I said. Let's say a person in the fourth grade might have learning challenges, and that person wanted to do something that was very creative, like, for example, a magic show, which included earning, let's say, a $10 bill. Don't you think that person should be allowed to do it because he tries so hard at everything? I think creativity should always be encouraged, Mr. Rock smiled. He stood up to go. He shook hands with everybody, including Catherine. She must have liked him, too, because her tongue shot out and gave his hand a sticky lick. As soon as Mr. Rock was gone, I turned to my parents. You wouldn't go against the advice of a teacher, would you? I asked. I had great hope in my heart. Please? Can I just do the magic show? My mother and father looked at each other for what seemed like a year and a half. We'll get back to you on this, my father finally answered.